Hello and welcome to this training session on data stage. Today we are going to learn about one more processing stage of data stage which is known as a sort stage. Now a sort stage is a stage that is used for sorting the data. Sorting the data means ordering by the data by some key column or a group of key columns. So it is similar to a SQL order by function or clause. Now on my designer window, I already have a sequential file stage and I have already defined it to read from my test underscore customer text file. Let me just say OK. Now let me go to the processing category. And select the sort stage. So here I have my sort stage. I'll just take it to my job window. Let me connect it to the sequential file stage. So now, okay. So let me connect this link here and take out an output link from this as well. I want to write my data to a data set. So let me go select a data set and put here a data set as well. Let me first full configure the data set, give it a path name and some test sort dot ds. Say OK. Now I already have my metadata defined for my sort link. Let me double check on the sort stage and see what are the properties available to me. Now you might have observed that there are various other stages which are available which have this sort stage defined on the input link. So at that time itself when we are doing the partitioning, we can do the sorting of the data. But this stage will give us some more options. So that is why in some scenarios, it might be required to use this stage explicitly. Now, if you go to the properties tab, the very first property for us is to define the sorting key. So I can go and if all the columns are available for me from the source data to sort on. So I can define any column which I want to sort on. So let's say I want to sort on the country ID column. Now let me go to the sub property of this, the sort key mode. Do I want to sort on the country ID column? Or I can say don't sort previously grouped. That means the data is already grouped by this key column which is country ID and I do not need to sort it again. So this is advantageous because we do not want to load a data stage job in the backend with extra uh, sort operations. So if you understand your data well, then you can specify this don't sort previously group. Similarly, there's another option called don't sort previously sorted. What this will do is this will this says that my data is already sorted on this column. So please do not sort it again. This tells the stage to not sort the data again on this key column. So again, you have to need to have a good understanding of your data and then you can define these options. Otherwise, you can just define the sort option. Now you can see here that there's some available properties to add the case sensitive, whether you want the sorting to be case sensitive or not, null position, whether you want the nulls to be first or last, or you want to sort it as epsilon. Now, if you click again on the sorting keys, you can see that multiple keys can be defined on which we want to sort our data. So now I can define one more key or column on which I want to sort my data. So let me define that column as gender. The sort key mode similarly, I can define sort. Sort order is for me ascending. So that is okay. Now let us look at some of the options which are available here. One of the options is allow duplicates is true so if you do if you set this to false that means that it will only output one record to the output stage so if you have multiple records coming from the source for the combination of these key columns it will remove the duplicates and it will only output one random unique record so in most of the cases we do not want that to happen we want all the records to be outputted just sorted by the input column so we will set this to false now what is this next property create cluster key change column so by default it is false 
and it can be set to true. Now what happens this key change column this can be set to th uh, true only when you have a previously sorted key data coming in. So if you would have defined the sort key mode as don't sort previously grouped or don't sort previously sorted then we can define this cluster key change column. So let's keep it as don't sort previously sorted because we want to see how this will function. So let us set this to true. The next is create key change column false. So create key change column. Whenever the key will change, it will change its value. Let's set this to true as well. So we'll see how these function when we look at the data. Output statistics false. So if you want the statistics that 10% has been done, sorting has been done, 20% has been done. If you want to output that kind of statistics in your job log, you can set this to true. What is your sort utility? We want to use the data state sort, which this sort stage is going to implement converting in the back end into T sort operators, or do you want to use a Unix sort ability? So you can give a Unix sort command. So in that case, all these options will disappear because that will use the Unix capabilities to sort the data there. So let's say no, let's use the data state sort utility. And the last option is stable sort true. So we have already seen what this option means, whether you want to preserve the sorting of the non-key columns or not. So you can just say true. Now let's see the input. The input we have to make sure that we again partition. We partition, we do a hash partitioning. Otherwise our results might be wrong. Perform sort as well because that is a requirement. That is a requirement to sort the data. So let me specify all the key columns on which I have defined a sorting, the country ID column and the next column that I have designed is the gender column. So I'm sorting and partitioning by both of them. Now I have just one input link that comes out of this stage. That's okay for me. Now let me go to the output tab. You will see that the additional columns here called the cluster key change and the key change columns because we had defined these as two. Therefore, these two columns have now appeared here and they will we'll move them to the output and see what are the values that enter these stages. So let's say, OK, we have configured the sort stage. We have already defined the name for the data set in which the output records will be collected. Now we have seen that there is just one input link that can come out of the sort stage. Let us see if there is a chance of having multiple output links. So let me try pulling out another output link. The source stage cannot support any more output links. So it can have only a single output link, no project link. Now I'm done with the basic design of my job. Let me just compile this job save the changes to the job, compile this job and then run this job. And then we'll try to understand how the key change columns and the cluster key change columns work and what is the difference between the two columns. Now, one thing that you need to remember is that for the cluster key change column, you should always define either don't sort previously grouped or don't sort previously sorted. Otherwise, that column will not function for you. So now let me uh, run this job and see what happens. So the run dialog box comes up. I select the run option and the job will start executing. So it turns blue. That means the job is executing. So I have 20 rows that have come in and I've got 10 rows in the output they have been sorted and grouped by now let me again go to the sort stage and see what i have done why do why have i got only 10 records in the output because i have set this option allow duplicates to false that's why it has only picked unique record for the combination of country id and gender key columns now i do not want that to happen so i have to put this to true allow duplicates true let's say okay let us recompile the job and then we'll see what is the data that enters into the data set. So we'll recompile this job. So once the job gets compiled, we'll be able to execute this job. So let's run this job. OK. 
okay say run and the run dialog box and the job should start running and now i should be getting the complete 20 records in my output data set as well so i can see here that the 20 records have been propagated to the output data set now let's right click on it and view the data for this link and see what are the values that have entered into the key change columns and the cluster key change columns so these are the values that we have now got let us try to understand what do these values mean now let's look at this we have grouped by the country id column so all the country id columns are grouped together and we have grouped by the gender so within the country id column the female gender and the male gender okay now let's see the country id column was the first key column that we defined and the cluster key change has a value of one for the very first record in this category of columns for which the con in this category of records for which the country id value is one for all other records the value is zero so in this case this can be used to find to identify the first record or a unique record when the first key column value changes so for every key column now the key column value has changed to 2 so the cluster key change value will become from 0 to 1 so this can be used to identify when a key change has occurred a key value change occurs from the first key column that we define now if we look at the key change value we will see that this is a combination the country id and the gender whenever it changes it becomes one whenever there is a duplicate on the same combination becomes zero again this becomes one again this becomes zero so now what is the use when i want to see what is my key change when my composite key or a group of key columns change its value and a new key combination comes in this will be set to one for all the other duplicate records, this would be set to zero. In case of cluster key change column, any key which has been previously sorted, it will have the value of one. For all the other records, it will have the value of zero. So this is the practical usage of these two columns. When we want to identify, we have some criteria that when the key column changes, you should reset the value to zero. So how to identify when the key column has changed? You can use this sort stage and use the key change column to identify that. So when the key change value is one, that means a new key combination, a record with a new key combination of value has come in. When the key change value is zero, that means that there are duplicate records for the same key combination of value so this is the use of sort stage otherwise for simple sorting it is always better to do the sorting on your input link itself when you're defining the partitioning because in any case you need to have your data sorted out so you can define your sorting on the input links or in link on the different stages itself in that case you do not need to use this explicit sort stage so in the next videos, we'll look at other stages, other processing stages. So for now, this is the end of this video. Thank you for watching.